guys. Let me have it. Let's, let's talk about it. the expectation is going to change, right? Would you continue Correct. doing the NFC South? But when you look at how you guys finished, the four and seven starters are up, but how you finished, do you feel like, like you've got some momentum heading into next season with the playoff experience that you guys got and bringing everybody back? I think the young guys got experience for how long the season is and the ups and downs of it. I don't think you can carry the momentum into next year because you're going to have a different team. You're going to have some new guys. We're going to have to start over. We have new coordinators on the offensive side of the ball and some new coaches over there. So we got to reestablish the culture and the chemistry. But we do have guys that's played in tough games and that fought through some injuries and have came out on the other side and see the length of the season. So the young guys being a year older have a lot more confidence. So. That's helpful. I want to ask you about the interior offensive line. You've been able to make some additions. Just obviously that'll be a competition, but how, how you like what you've added and how that'll shake out. Really like both guys that we had. Uh, Breeden from, from the Giants. He's played all along the offensive line, but if you leave him in the same place, he was a very good player. And one we got from Philly is huge size guy. He started in some ball games, losing Leverett. Obviously we get some, and Stenny. Obviously we get some. The guys that are fighting for a starting spot doesn't mean we won't add any. Uh, and we can add any if we get some, but those guys we really like that we signed. What's been the best thing so far about, about Liam Cohen? What you've seen within the meetings, he said the other day, he's having the most fun he's ever had coaching. He hasn't the grass with the players. Just the offensive coaching staff gelling so quickly with the guys we kept and the guys that he's brought in. It's been a real joy to see those guys, when they go in there and lock the door, I got to get on Liam to get them guys a bathroom break because he doesn't let them out of the meeting room. But they have a real good feel for each other, and the chemistry is coming together how you want it. So I look forward to that once the players get in. It's always difficult to do that, but, you know, I was lamenting over that, and I talked to Sean Payton one day, and we were talking about something. He said, at least you know you're picking the right guys. So <clears throat> that has some solace to it and a consolation to it at the same time. <clears throat> we've won the division the last two years with two different offensive coordinators, so hopefully that trend continues. Todd, obviously you had a lot of success last uh, year making the second round of the playoffs, but looking back at the team, is there an area that you need more play out of They're all areas. I think we can get better with situational football. Obviously, offense running the ball better, more efficiently. Defense got to be a lot better in two minute and third and long. Uh, offense, we turned the ball over in some key situations. There, there's a ton of areas we can get better at that we'll continue to try to get better at and add to get better at. We'll have a lot more communication. You know, Jordan was great when he was here before. He was a great communicator and leader for us when he was on the field. Him and Levante clicked a couple years ago, and I'm sure Levante is one of the happiest guys to have him back. I'm happy to have him back. And Winfield, the whole team is happy to have him back in the fold and just look forward to with the experience that he's gotten in New York to help us get better in, on the back end. Bryce Hall is a very good football player. Uh, he's an outside corner, highly intelligent, very long. He's very long, just like Zion and Dean is. Uh, plays great man-to-man, -man, has a good feel for zone. Uh, he has some injury issues in the, ha in the past, but if we can keep him healthy, I think he'll be a good addition for us. And Tavier plays nickel as well as special teams. Uh, he's a fierce tackler. He's a tough competitor. And he can play some safety for us as well. He's he's a really good utility piece to use, and he's a chess piece going forward to see how much he learns that we can really use to help us during the season. Was Hall, was Hall somebody you knew in the draft process or got to know anywhere? No, I didn't know him in the draft process. Actually, my kids knew him, but I didn't know him as well. I knew who he was in the draft process, but just watching his film over the past couple of years, I knew he was a good football player, and to have him out there and come in the fold like that is a really good fit for us. Todd, what do you, I know you love that the formation you did. Uh, obviously, incredible comeback season. What, do you think, what would you like to see him do even more to share? Just to 
Well, there's always, always little things. There's, there's still the grasp of the offense. Obviously, from Dave to Liam calling plays, you have to get a better feel. Even though they've been together, they haven't been together like this, starting from scratch for a full year. Uh, just take command of the offense and making the adjustments. And he did that last year, but there's still some nuances we can get better at, and he'll be the first to tell you that. Some nuances he can get better at to make us more efficient. Uh, would like him to slide a little bit more when he can. Uh, don't want to take away none of his competitiveness, but just commanding the offense and getting us in great positions and putting the ball where it needs to be and just continue to do that. It's going to help the fact that he's staying in Tampa. He's been, been here since the end of the season. No, that's been great. I mean, he always wants to get better. Baker's been fighting his whole life. I mean, most of us has, but he has as well, and he'll continue to do that. That's not going to change him one bit. Well, no, because we don't teach it, we don't preach it, and we don't do it. So it's really not a big deal for us as far as getting ready for something that we don't do. And, uh, and if it does happen, it's definitely not going to be intentional. But it, it just makes you more aware. Uh, we've been aware. We don't tackle that way. We don't teach it that way. So it's not going to change. It's not going to change for us. You've owned this division for three straight years. Still didn't get a lot of respect last year. You know, the predictions were uh, Atlanta retools a little bit this year, and now they're the favorite to win the division. Thoughts about how just the national perception is still leading off you guys? No, it's no different. I mean, you talk about respect. Aretha Franklin's probably the only one that gets that. <laughs> everybody, everybody else, you kind of just go with the flow. We're not trying to win the offseason. We're trying to win the season. So our focus will be the same. It fuels a lot of us. It fuels a lot of the players. And we get ready to come back and try to defend our title like we did, just go further in the playoffs. That's all we worry about at this time of year. You work on both, you know, you get to work on some in the morning, some in the afternoon. It's nonstop. You got to hit the ground running. So it's a work in progress. You know, they, they, you're never going to be caught up until you actually get to the players in there and get started. But we have an understanding of what we're trying to target and what they have to look at. And they've been doing a good job at that. No, they've been great because they know a lot of the guys that we're just starting to look at. So it's a great understanding that they have. And they also have an understanding of how these guys play. And they have background information that we wouldn't be privy to other than that. But they're very good college and pro coaches. They're very good teachers. They have very good insight. So we listen to them quite a bit. Hey, Todd, what does a Shaq really have to offer Miami at this point in his career? Shaq's going to be a tough player for him. Uh, he's a very aggressive player. He's a great. He's great to work with. He's a hard worker. I think he's going to be a, a, a steal for them, and I think he's going to have a very good year. Coach, can you talk a little bit more about Carlton Davis and his time and evolution? And you, you didn't really lose him. You traded him, which is kind of different. Can you just talk about that? Well, Carlton's been a, a great corner since I've been here. Obviously, he had some injury issues in the past that kept him off the field sometimes a year. He's had some up and down games, but overall, he's a good worker. He, he's, he's a great young man. Uh, he puts in the time. I think Detroit's got a very good football player. When you can get a third-round pick for a corner, I mean, we have quarterbacks going for six-round picks. So if you can get a third-round pick for a corner, that really helps your team at a time well, you probably have to cut some money business-wise. I think it's a good deal for both of us, and I wish Carlton the best, and he know he can call me at any time. Speaking of uh, you know, cornerbacks, you guys brought in some new cornerbacks in the agency. Uh, how important is that depth or possibly competition going into training camp, and how is it going to help both the Well, it's always competition going in. The fact that those guys have played some games in this league is very helpful. The competition is going to be there with Zion and Dean as well as those two guys. They got to get caught up with the system, obviously, but we look to see how they fit in and how we can use them as time goes on. Coach, you coached Mike Edwards for a few years. What, what kind of player is he and what can he do in the back end? Mike's a very instinctive player. He's a ball hawk, um, very heady football player, very smart. He gets his hands on the ball all the time, and you can look for turnovers when he's in the game.
I thought they worked hard the first season. They start coming into their own at the end. Uh, they had stats, but not as nearly as the stats that they could have. And once they got rolling towards the second part of the season and start working together, you could really see their ability start to show. And it's going to kind of be part of their team next year defensively from that standpoint as they go. And you look forward to them just getting better and better. Obviously, the best availability is durability for them to stay on the field. So that'll be important as well. But they have promising futures. Well, they both started games, so we, we don't have a problem with that. It's just the efficiency of the pass rush. We kind of know where we want to use Joette now. He's more of a joker-type player for us to move around and do different things for us and set up. Nelly's just very efficient and effective where he is. You're always looking for that 15-sack guy, and sometimes that's just a shot of luck. Sometimes you get back there and the ball's out, and we, we have a great deal of confidence in Watts becoming a more complete player, obviously. And we still have Cam Gill, we can see, and then Ramirez, but we're not looking. We're looking to get better. We can get better from a game standpoint and helping those guys out too. But if we had to play, we know we can play, but we're always trying to upgrade the sack total. I mean, I think you always look at quarterbacks in the draft, and you never know if someone's going to fall in your lap. So you have to take a peek at them. So we always look at quarterbacks in the draft, and the quarterbacks are just more than the top five guys that are going in the draft. There are a lot more quarterbacks that can help you, if not immediately down the line that you look at, and those are hard to come by. So anytime you can try to get one, you'll make sure you look at it. I don't know if it improved. Communication-wise, we were there. They're different type of players. You know, KJ's a downhill player. Devin's a sideline player. And Devin was nicked up some. Uh, I thought the energy was there when KJ, because he, he's, he's such a enigmatic guy that he, he, he consumes everybody. Devin is also. I just thought the timing was right. He earned his playing time. He practiced like a pro every day. We look forward to him being one of our leaders this year and, you know, wish Devin the best. Talked to him when he went to Philly and he knows what he has to do and he's still one of the greatest talents in this league and I wish him the best, but we look forward to seeing KJ out there. Well, and we're not running a 40, so he's a football player. You got to get around him to use your speed. KJ, what he lacks uh, in the two steps in the speed department, he makes up for being in the right place and understanding the game. So you can play fast and not be fast, and you can be fast and not play fast. So KJ is one of those guys that not very fast, but he plays fast, so we're comfortable with that. You have to go through the uh, combine assessing some players and getting a chance to interview guys. <clears throat> What kind of field do you have for this draft? Obviously, you're picking late, but I mean, is there certain areas that you see a lot of depth uh, at quality players? There should be a lot of depth because of all the offensive linemen and quarterbacks and wideouts going in the first round. I think the defensive players are getting pushed back. Um, after pick 12 or 13, you're probably going to see some surprises, and we're just going to sit back and see whether we can move up or down or stay right there and take the best player. But there should be a quality quality guys taken in the draft. I'm not sure if there's going to be an inside guy in the first round. There probably won't be a running back in the first round. There'll be one tight end and you probably won't see a safety in the first round. So there'll be depth and a very few D linemen. So there should be a lot of guys in rounds two, three, and four that we can really see that we probably shouldn't expect to be there. How predictable is the draft for you over the years of going through drafts? I mean, you sit there with whatever pick you have. Have you been able to kind of get a feel for each team or is it it's a wild card. I mean, you kind of know what the top three or four are going to do after that. You got to see. You, you never know. People can move up or move down. You have to be prepared many different ways. Uh, 
Me, Jason, Spytech, Bill, Rob, Greeny, we go through a ton of different scenarios of what could and couldn't happen, and at the end of it, you just got to wait and see. I thought Logan started off slow. I thought he came on and had a heck of a year. He had some sacks to where the ball was out, where he got through clean. That doesn't show up on the total. He really started playing the run better. He started playing the pass better. He kind of found his niche within the defense and understanding what he has to do to win. So I really look forward to Logan, along with Kansi and Vita, to really be one of the more formidable defensive lines. With J.J. coming in after being on the practice squad, he was a pleasant surprise coming in against Carolina. We knew he could hit and he could play, but he was having trouble with the scheme. He came in and ran the scheme perfectly, and he fit, and he played like he belonged, so I was really pleased with that. Sebastien is he's we look forward to him to being a very good football player along with kj and levante he's right there i think he's a heck of a pass rusher he's one of our best zone droppers and he has a feel for the game so we got to keep him healthy to stay on the field but we're really looking for a big jump for him this season is, is he primarily a, a mo backer for you or did he play mike no he plays mike and mo Hopeful. I mean, Trey, Trey did a great job last year of coming in. He can only get better with a year under his belt. Um, we're still looking at a spot. We think we need another receiver, like Rakim, to have a full year, uh, not being injured, to see where he really is right now. We think we got some guys on the practice squad that can help as, as well. So you never look away from drafting a receiver. We think there's a lot of them in the draft. So if the timing is right, you know, we'll try to add something. <laughs> um, it, it's a different game for some. For some, they just come in and want to play the game. But when they come to the league, I think they're fine. Uh, college is a different game. I try to stay out of it that way. I just monitor it from that standpoint. I know it's a step down for some of them kids coming into lesser facilities because in college they have some very nice ones. But it, it's still football and all those guys trying to get to the NFL, so they try to do the right thing. No, you, you don't look in a guy's pocket. You look at a guy's will and see if he loves the game. You know, there, there's a lot of guys that get in here that's going to play for money, but if that forces you to play hard football, you play hard football. But you got to know how to play. It's always the film first, seeing if a guy can play. We're not going to look at a guy that just takes money and doesn't play the game or doesn't stay healthy or not trying to do the right thing for the team. I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, there was a time when nobody was coming out early and the four or five year prospects were more solid than the younger guys because they were mentally more ready and their bodies were ready. The younger guys coming in after a year or two, you have to go through a whole sometimes mental redshirt year. And there's a few outliers, but you have to go through a year or two just to see if they can become what they can become. So that's not necessarily a bad thing as I see it. Feel better heading into this season maybe than last year because a year ago Baker was coming in. You kind of knew what he was a little bit, but you didn't know how he was going to fit into your team. So you saw him after, obviously in action, but you kind of feel better now that you know that he's had a year under his belt and you know what kind of direction this offense may be going in. I feel more comfortable because we have a solid quarterback that's played. You know, after Tom left, you don't we didn't really have a guy that's played any snaps that stepped up in there. But having gone through a year with him, knowing we have a quarterback at that position and it's solidified, you feel more comfortable that way. But we still got to win games. <laughs> the score. <laughs>
I don't know if it's the same routine or not. Uh, you try to do what you did well to get you there, and then you try to make tweaks within the game. And, you know, a lot of things got to go right for you to win ball games. It takes skill. It takes knowledge. It takes luck. It takes a lot of things. So you got to kind of be on the roll at the right time, and the good Lord's got to be on your side. No, I think every year is different. Uh, you go into the season and go into the playoffs with different guys, so all of them won't have the same thing. It, it probably makes you hungrier, if anything else. They wanted to bring Justin in. He's more of a technician to help those guys, especially in the blocking aspect of it, and move Van Dam over into more of a passing thing, which was more of his thing when he came out from being a quarterback. And I think it really helps us and it helps those guys from a technique standpoint, and hopefully that'll help us in the run game as well with the better blocking. Do you think that's a major potential improvement in <clears throat> tight end blocking? It can be. I mean, it can be. It's got to be all across the board. They're part-time offensive linemen, part-time receivers anyway, but everybody overall has got to do a better job blocking. As a coach, you want a lot of things that you're not going to get. And the object is to win the game, number one, whether you run or throw the football. We want to be efficient in a lot more areas than just the running game. You want to be efficient in everything and say, we're winning because we do everything well. Well, that doesn't happen. You're either going to pass it better or you're going to run it better. Right now, we're passing it better. So you go with that to do what you got to do to win ball games. Can we be better in the running game? Yes, but as a lot of areas, we can be better in that. And that's what we're going to strive for. But with the new coaching staff. I think we were last in the league the last two years. We made some strides in games. We looked like we were making strides in some games. We looked like we were stuck in the mud. So you want to make strides in that area, but we're not going to lose focus and we have to do whatever we have to do to win ball games. That comes first. I thought Rashad matured because he, he really got a hold of the offense and understood what we were expecting of him in that aspect. So he started playing faster because he was playing smarter. He knew where the cutback lanes were going to be before they opened up. Early in the season, he was waiting to see, and it was slowing him down, and he probably missed a few holes. In the passing game, he's always been an asset. We probably hadn't used him as much, but if you can get him in open space, he's a very good route runner. He's very elusive out in the open field, and he has outstanding hands, and he really worked on his pass blocking and became that way, so he became a very good all-around football player, and there's not too many of them in the league like that right now. No, it hasn't been much of an adjustment there. It's kind of been the same. I don't know if you heard the comments from uh, J.B. Bickerstaff last week from the Cleveland Cavs, but he said that you know now that gambling's been legalized, it's almost across the country in every state. He said it's getting out of hand. He said you know uh, there's been death threats pushed his way. He hears fans in the stands yelling to keep players in because of the over/unders. Do you think that, that legalized gambling has made an impact in, in sports? And, and how do you how do you guys handle that? Well, we talk about it going into the season, and we'll talk about it again one time in the season. We know anything to do with gambling for us is, is a no-no. So if you think about it and it sounds wrong, it's probably wrong. Um, I, I think it's been going on in the sports for years, whether it was legal or not, but that's really not my concern at this time. You just try to make sure your team is not involved in any of that, players or coaches, and you try to run your team that way and keep the out. That's part of outside noise. You got to be aware of it because it's in stadiums now, believe me. And the Super Bowl is in Vegas, and to walk to get something to eat, you got to walk through a casino. So I understand all that. And you just got to continue to monitor it and try to coach your guys. And if everyone coaches their guys, I think we'll be okay. I'm sure it could. Uh, if you listen to the wrong person, I'm sure it could. And we've seen all the movies with the Chicago Black Sox and all that stuff that can happen. But you try to tune it out the best you can as a coach, and you try to make sure you're on top of it.
certainly the talent coming in. Well, we still have Levante, Mike, Chris, uh, Baker, Vita, Levante, and now Winfield. We have guys in the locker room that's done it this year. You know, they've done it this year, and we understand that our young guys are going to have to play as soon as they come in. There's a lot of rookie hazing, but nothing bad, and we they embrace those guys and make sure they put in the work to keep up with everybody out on the field. You only get to be a rookie on our team for about a week or two after that. You're, you're a seasoned vet, and you're expected to study and learn how to watch film and prepare like everyone else prepares. And they do a good job of embracing those guys and taking them to eat and showing them the ropes and doing things the right way where it's an easy transition for them. Speaking of those rookies, you know, last year the team was very youth focused, had a lot of new guys in. And then, of course, with the draft, there will be new players even still. How excited are you knowing that last year you had a lot of rookies that showed a lot of really good potential and they'll be in their second year and more experience going into the things? As long as they come in, prepared physically I think you know all of them hit a rookie wall at some point in the season they came out of it and they became mentally tougher you know I'm excited to see what they do their second year and how they fit in the system and how they embrace their roles and take the bull by the horns and become the players that we know they can be so I'm really excited about that I thought he matured. I thought I thought his hands were extremely well, worked well with the Jets. I think he played back deep a lot better. He understood quarters and half coverage where we used them more around the line of scrimmage. We used them back some. I think he became a very good third down player uh, that he was still young when we had him and he matured a lot over the years. So all of that we expect to see when we when we get out on the field. Uh, can't be, think back that far, but those are probably the two quickest ones I've coached, but I have coached one or two, I don't think, at the same time. They have a good feel on the field of what each other's going to do. They, they, Like I said, they both communicate, and that com communication on defense for us is everything. And if you have one in the back end, one in the middle, and one in the front, which we have all three now, I don't know if we had that last year. I thought Wynn was communicative, but Jordan was like vocal, vocal. Obviously, he had more years on him at the time. Uh, him and Levante just clicked and were always on the same page. So we just look forward to rekindle that and pick that up and just be more communicative on the back end. So who's that guy on the front? Is that Vita? Vita is on the front end right now. Vita does a very good job of getting us in and out of games and understanding what we have to do. But they're all catching it pretty quick. Collage is very smart as well, and Logan's coming along too. So that, that'll be big for us. I thought Luke had a very good year uh, moving from guard to tackle. I thought he's one of our unsung heroes right there. He didn't give up a lot of sacks. Um, he played tough. He played with confidence. He played out on the edge. He was very comfortable that way. Uh, him and Tristan working out all year. I thought he was a pleasant surprise. I just look forward to him getting better. Coach, can you comment on some of the rule changes that were voted on here at the meetings? And also, did you get a chance to check out the golf course at all? I have not checked out the golf course. and. The rule changes are they're minor. They're fine for us. We'll just adjust as we go. It's, it's great that the league's trying to evolve every year to make the game better, but make the game safer. Uh, it seems like the rules are going against the defense all the time, but, you know, you figure it out, and you, you, if you don't teach it or coach it that way, you don't worry about it, and you just continue to try to get your guys to play hard. I think with the experience he got in year one, uh, he'll be a lot better. I thought he was very smart and played very tough last year. I think he hit a rookie wall at some point with the grind and his body. I think he knows how to prepare uh, physically right now. Uh, he's a little, he'll be a little more stouter and a little more heavier. He's a good football player. He's a very good football player. We look for Cody to be very, very good this year. He got back there. The ball was out some. You know, Joe's a very unique player. He's not going to be 
the go around the corner sack type of guy. Joe can move all across the line of scrimmage and help us in a lot of things. He, he's our linebacker. He's our defensive end. He's our three tech. He's our part-time nickel. He's our part-time inside backer. He can come from a lot of areas, so he has a lot of jobs. And he's one of those chess pieces that I talked about. So he's a different type of rusher. He's very athletic. He can stunt and do a lot of things. He's not just going to come and bull you and go around the corner. Do we think he can rush the passer? Yes. Have he left some sacks out there? Yes. But he's made some great plays for us or set up great plays for other people. And that goes unnoticed because you don't see him at the finality of the play. So we look for Joe just to come back and do those things for us and get better and better at what he was doing. Todd, you talked about the chess pieces. Is Jordan Whitehead, is he kind of a chess piece now with how he's rounded out his game? And you're one of the more imaginative coaches when it comes to blitzes and pressure packages. Having a guy like, like Winfield do some of that stuff, do you almost have another guy that, that can you know, play center field for you, that can blitz from the slot from Whitehead? He can, he can do those things. It's just a matter of who's on the field at that time that can do those type of players. Right now, like I said, the chess pieces we have right now are Winfield, Levante, Tryon, and McCollum. Those four guys can do a lot of jobs. And other people can do some jobs, but those four guys in particular right now and if you have more, you have more. But last year, those were the four guys that you can see Levante on the edge. You can see him back deep. You can see him up front. You can see Zion at safety, nickel corner. You can see Joe playing inside backer, three technique outside backer. You can see all that you can see win at nickel, backer, safety. Those guys can move around. You don't need all of them to be chess pieces. You just need a few. And... If you have more, that's great. If you don't need to use them, that's great too. So we'll continue to monitor that as the off season begins when we get the guys in and we'll kind of see how that goes. So there's a chance he could evolve into that. There's a very good chance, yes. Okay, that'll do it. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, Coach.